Hello. Um, very nice to be here. Thank you so much for coming along. And how many of you have been before, by the way? How many of you have, have seen Medium's work? There's quite a few of you. How many of you have seen me work before? Oh, bless you. And you've come back for more, which is fantastic. And there will no doubt be a number of you that have never been before and are thinking, what's going on? Um, but you're here anyway. So um, I know there's a bit more pressure uh, on you this evening because of the, the screen, the extra cameras, etc. Uh, but please don't let them put you off or don't try to sound posher than you normally do and that kind of thing. Because um, your family won't recognise you at a later date. I honestly I, I, I know that. Um, so more than that, um, I'll get on with it then, um, and I really say, as I say, hope you, you like it and you get it, and uh, let's see um, what's to be done and who's to be here. And uh, as I shift my awareness there to feel the spirit people and allow them there to come close um, to me, I have Father um, here wishing to communicate with me. I know he looks for his daughter in the audience. His daughter was with him as he passes to the spirit side of life. But I know that his daughter's husband carries him um, like a baby from one space to the other um, because he became so small uh, or so light um, before he goes there to the spirit world. Would anybody understand that information? Tony, get it all, darling, or everything not? is making sense. My husband carried my father. My father was a very tiny man when he died. Right, wait one second. Let me see if I can do it with you. Um, you know, he's 70 when he passes. He was, just, he was just 71 when he passed. That's fine. And you know that he's tiny when he passes over. Do you see he has blue eyes, darling, also? Shh. Striking blue eyes. And you're his daughter and, and his, his daughter. son in law his son helps in -law to move him, etc. Carried, et carried yeah. him when yeah. he oh good, I'm glad you're here. Um, um, when he passes. And um, I get this um, same feeling and sense here when I talk there about the father that his breathing was very, very, very bad. Do you see this? Yes. Um, before I pass. And I yes. feel like I need like a breathing apparatus at times or yes. oxygen. You see that for yes. him um, before he goes to the spirit. You, you should be aware that your father had suffered with a sense of insomnia or had real trouble sleeping, sleeping, especially in the last year or so of his life. Do you see this? In the moment? last few months, yes, definitely. And um, I feel almost like I want to sleep sitting up with this man as well. Do you it's see that? It's the only way he could breathe. That's it. And I know this is why I can't sleep because that I'm sitting up and it's not very comfortable. Um, I know we all like to eat dinners and stuff, but I know he loves a roast dinner like I've given him a million pounds. You see this? So it must be his favourite, you see this, to give me my roast dinner. And I wonder also roast beef might be his favourite dinner or roast beef is very much on the menu. And I know as he eats this here, he wants you to know that he's eating properly and that he's put on weight again. And that's a wonderful thing. I know that you love your dad, and I know he's a smashing man, but I feel that he might be a bit awkward sometimes. Do you see that? We could clash. Good. <laughs> um, because I definitely have this sense there, and it's not just from what you tell me there, that I want to say sorry if I was a bit of a nuisance. You know that. Or I'm sorry if, if, if I was a bit hard work at times. Um, but I don't think he really is sorry. I think he says it to be polite. Um, but um, <laughs> he doesn't feel yep. terribly sorry um, at all. And um, as he stands um, with me and about me. Do you remember if he was one of three brothers then, your father, or if he has two brothers in the spirit world, two other boys that belong to him as brothers? He was one of four, but three are past. So there's three upstairs in the spirit world? Yeah. That's fine. Because I know as he stands with me, I feel I've got his two brothers that come and stand either side of him here. So I've got three boys, you see that in the yeah. other world, that want to say hello to you. And you see for me how he passes over in the early hours of the morning yes. where he passes. Yes. And um, I know he's acknowledging passing very early, you see this, in the morning. Yes. So I don't know if I'm like four in the morning, half past four in the morning, it this was, kind of feeling. Is that yeah, okay for it you? it was early morning, yeah. And, um, it's, it's ever so strange because there was, there was a picture or a statue of an angel by his bed. Do you see this? He told me there was an angel by his bed. Oh, that's fine. Um, because he keeps making me say that, an angel by my bed. So in fact, he told that. I love it. Um, but I know that he acknowledges this for you. There was an angel by my bed. And I feel um, just to acknowledge this will help you to know this must be your dad and nobody else's. Do you see that? Yes. It has to be your dad and nobody else's dad here. Come on, Mr. Man. 
Um, he's got his vest on, and you'll be glad to hear that. Um, but I know he loves the vest. Do you see that? I've always got yeah. one on. Don't matter if it's boiling outside. I've still got my vest on, because you never know, do you? Might turn a bit cold. And um, it's a nice white vest that he wears there to boot. Um, bear with me again. He's, um, he's got two daughters, or there's two girls, two girls. I'm his only child, but... And I do have you have daughter. one daughter? Yes. yes. That's fine. But I definitely know I've got two girls, because he makes me feel that there. And I know that I love uh, my son-in-law, I love my two girls. Do you see that? Yes. And I feel that his granddaughter then was as close as the daughter could have been um, to him. Do you yes. see this? Yes. And um, just before um, I have to move on there, I, I keep wanting to say something like, um, don't for a second feel sorry for me. This is what he's saying. He says, don't feel sorry for me. I had a good life. It's all right. And, and I feel it was only at the end that it all went a bit wrong. You see yeah. that. Other yeah. than that, I was all right. Um, do you see how um, he would grow tomatoes? Growing tomatoes, you see yes, that? Yes, yes. And I know he's got a... He's a bit weird with them, though. You know what I mean? Like, um, you have to eat them, and you have to say, oh, Dad, these are the best tomatoes in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you don't confess the wonder of them, you get a dirty look. But I know that um, his tomatoes are simply the best. And because I know he's eating one as I'm talking, and I know he, he wants to sort of luz you one for later, throw you one for later. <laughs> you felt your father since his past. You were asleep, you woke up from your sleep, and you knew that he was laying by the side of you there or by the side of your bed? Do you I've see felt that? my father many times, yes. Yeah, and I done. know here that I'm, it's definitely him. You've not, got, you've not lost the plot. It's <laughs> definitely, which is nice to know, isn't it, yeah. really? Um, it is definitely him uh, that comes and makes his presence felt um, with you time and again. This smell, it's a common smell, but it's a smell of old spice that it just pours all over me, you see. And I don't <laughs> like it. But anyway... Um, <laughs> He loves Old Spice, you see this? Yes, it's the only thing he wore. Yes, I and I, but I feel it's a daily thing. I don't put it on yep. once in a while. I'm always smelling of me Old Spice. Yep. I, it's actually a very nice smell. But I know he loves that smell. And I really fancy Old Spice soap on a rope. I'll have the, the perfume <laughs> and the talc, anything I do. Yep. But I know this is me with. That's what you would remember me with. And that's what you know me by. I know he rolls his own cigarettes, your father yep. there as well. <laughs> yes. um, because he's rolling a cigarette. He's got one in his in his little lip there and I feel that I would might tuck one for later you see this yep. behind my ear <laughs> and one on there one in here that I've got them all done yeah and, I, and I, I'm certain that I've got this correctly, although this may not be a very, very good thing to do, but I know that he would get his granddaughter to roll his roll-ups for him or to lick the paper at the very least. You see that for me? To lick that minging bit of paper. You see that? Um, and, and I know that he smokes them ones better because they're my favourite ones. But with all of this information, please remember everything I've given you, won't you? But know your lovely dad has come back here um, to be with all of you as a family there. Uh, once and for all, I'm alive, I'm here, and I love you. And God bless you. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you very much. much. Thank you. My father was my idol. Um, I'm an only child, and I was very, very close to my father. He was a very small, uh, inoffensive Welshman. Um, we did an awful lot together, and as I said, he was my idol. I know that you love your dad, and I know he's a smashing man, but I feel that he might be a bit awkward sometimes. Do you see that? We could clash. Tony's description of my father was absolutely accurate. He did have a, a little bit of a temper, and we did clash at times, but we never parted bad friends, ever. This smell, it's a common smell, but it's a smell of old spice that it just pours all over me, you see, and I don't like it. He used to use the soap, the talc, the aftershave, the whole lot, and Tony actually picked up on that. He actually said he had the whole set, even the soap on the rope, and in my mother's house to this day is that set with the soap on the rope. It's unbelievable. He's got two daughters, or there's two girls, two girls. I know that he would get his granddaughter to roll his roll-ups for him, or to lick the paper at the very least. Do you see that for me? To lick that minging bit of paper, you see that? I'm an only child, but my daughter was also my dad's life. He used to say we were both his girls, even though it was his granddaughter. Um, my dad used to roll his own cigarettes, Golden Virginia, 
And when my daughter was little, she used to sit on his lap and lick the cigarette paper for him to seal. Do you remember if he was one of three brothers then, your father, or if he has two brothers in the spirit world? They know as he stands with me, I feel I've got his two brothers that come and stand either side of him here. Three brothers have passed, my dad and, and William and Ron. They're all very close and they all supported each other. And when Tony said there was one either side of him, I definitely knew it was William and Ron that were with him. But I know that his daughter's husband carries him um, like a baby from one space to the other um, because he became so small uh, or so light um, before he goes there to the spirit world. My father was diagnosed with lung cancer. He, it got him very quickly. Within eight months, he passed from diagnosis. Um, he's had a rapid weight loss, rapid weight loss. Um, he was always a fit man. He looked after my mother, who was, who still is a disabled lady all her life. He didn't like to rely on people, but towards the end, he had to rely a great deal on, our, on both myself and my husband. My husband used to have to pick him up and carry him to his bed and help him a lot, yes. That's exactly what happened. His breathing was very, very, very bad. Do you see this? Yes. Um, before I passed, and I yes. feel like I need like a breathing apparatus at times, or yes. oxygen, you see that for yes. him. He found it more and more difficult to breathe and, and speak. He had this very hoarse voice, um, and he had to rely on oxygen quite a bit, and the last few minutes of his life, he actually asked for the oxygen mask to be taken off so he could actually be with us without the mask on. His last words to me were, hold me, and he died in my arms. It's ever so strange because there was, there was a picture or a statue of an angel by his bed. Do you see this? When he said it, my daughter actually gasped because there was only my mother, myself, my daughter and my husband who knew about that. My mother actually went up to the bathroom. When she came down, she said to my dad, I bet you wondered where we were. And he said, no, it's OK, the angel has been sitting with me. Please remember everything I've given you, won't you? But know your lovely dad has come back here um, to be with all of you as a family there. Uh, once and for all, I'm alive, I'm here, and I love you. I, I've tried many times. I've been to see many mediums, and I've tried very often to get a reading from my dad. I've been one of these people that have been sitting there saying, come on, dad, come on, dad. Um, it's never happened before. That night, I went very relaxed, not really expecting to hear from my dad at all. When it came through, it was, it was just joyous. It was absolutely lovely. And for those few short minutes, it really felt like my dad was back with me. That's how I felt, and I'll always be grateful to Tony for that. Doing mediumship, it's like nothing else, because I can't think of anything else you could possibly do where there is no script and there's nothing rehearsed and you've got nothing to fall back on at all other than inspiration. So you stand up with not a thought in your mind other than desperately hoping you're going to be inspired by the spirit world. Um, so it's a kind of difficult thing to do, um, but because I've done it for 49, 24 years effectively, it's something I do do and I'm happy to do, um, but I, I do feel the pressure also. On a good day, when it all goes really right, on a good day when I can get my head round the pressure and just really relax enough just to be myself and uh, allow those thoughts and feelings to come to me and then of course hopefully interpret them correctly um, and that's fantastic. I have a, um, a gentleman here and um, I feel very young when I pass the spirit world and I wonder there might, whether I'm able to just be 22, 23 uh, when he passes over. I feel that he would remember the name of Christopher or a Chris name um, to be important. Um, he passes quickly to the spirit world when he passes and I feel that I pass outside or outdoors uh, when he goes to the spirit too. When he links with me here, he's got dark hair, his dark eyes, dark eyebrows. He's a good looking boy and I think he's taller than myself. He's broad uh, as he links with me. And you know, I feel he's got a real um, passion for motorbikes or a passion for scrambling bikes. I wonder whether you might know the name of Stephen, Stephanie, um, linked um, to him. 
as it would have been in the lifetime. Uh, would anybody here understand uh, this information, do you think? A uh, young lady just here. Thank you very much. And just yourself for, for the moment. That's smashing. Good. Hello there. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Um, let me think then. Um, so would you recognise him to be 22, 23 when he passed? 24. 24. Mm -hmm. And um, would you know I pass outside when I yes. pass? Yes. And that I'm tall and I'm broad with dark hair. Do you yes. know all these things as well for me? Yes. My dark eyebrows. And I, I, I want to talk about there. Um, did you answer these names that I feel with him as uh -huh. well? Like Chris? I had a friend uh, was present... Um, at his death, called Christopher. That's fine. And do you know the name of Steve, Stephanie? Yeah, he's got feeling. a half sister called Stephanie. And a half sister called Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Then may I work with you? Is that okay? Yes. And I know here that I, I would have passed over um, instantaneously with him. Do you see that for yes. me? Yes. I don't feel I've had something happen and then I've gone to hospital or anything like that. No. I feel I've gone in that moment. Yes. And I know that he makes me feel that, that his uh, um, neck would have been affected there in the way that he passed. Yes. And um, I don't want to be too graphic with that, but I know that's why it was so very quick. You see this, this yes. is my passing. Yes. Um, he, he loves to wear really horrible T-shirts, yes. like either brightly coloured T-shirts or with logos yes. or jokes on T-shirts. Yes. You see that? Do you remember that? Yes, I do. And um, I know he's come in here with a particularly stupid T-shirt on and thinking that you'll recognise him for that. Do you yes. see that? For knowing this. When I say to you he likes a drink, I don't mean over the top all the time. I don't. No. But I know he's coming here with a drink. Like okay. he wants to celebrate the fact he's coming for you. You see this? Or coming to speak <laughs> with you there today. Are you okay, darling? I'll, I'll continue and we'll see how we get on. Is that okay? And um, I, as, I, as, I, as I know that he wants me only to be happy with you uh, in, in, in this minute. Come on then, Mr. Man. Um, you, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you would have gone to see him three times after he passed. Yes. Did you see that? Yes. So it's like you went three times significantly to a chapel of rest or something like yes. this. And um, the last time that you went to see him, you placed an orange flower on his chest. An orange rose. Orange rose. Um, on, on his chest. Do you see that for me there? Yes. But I know he wants to thank you for the orange flower that you laid against him there. And he, and he saw that there from um, the spirit world. Um, um, did you understand also this reference there? Um, to him with motorbikes. Do you see that again? He used to have motorbikes. Mm -hmm. That's just fine. Because I know when I'm talking to him, I feel I keep losing him because he's going up and down on a motorbike here in front of me and I feel quite proficient on that bike. You see mm. that? Or I'm... I'm uh, or even, do you know, like on a BMX, you can do good stunts and this kind I of thing. I used to when he was younger. Yeah. I definitely feel I can, I'm a stunt mm -hmm. rider, but I can do this stuff um, very easily for myself. Listen, um, where he passes over, I know that there were lots of flowers placed in the space where he passes for a long time afterwards. Yes. So, mm. you understand that yes. for me there? Yeah. Um, and I feel that place is remembered and, and honoured in the same way that maybe his um, grave space or his last resting space would yes, be. Yes, it is. And I feel also that he wants to thank you for protecting him, which is a funny thing to say, isn't it? For protecting yeah. me and for looking after me. And I don't want to swear, um, but I know he could be a little sod at times, but I know that mm. you saw always the best in him. Yes. Did you see that from yes. me? Always the goodness in yes. him. And I like it. Um, you should re recognise and remember here that you disliked his friends or yes. you... Hated his friends, really. Yes. You see that? Yes. And um, because he's remembering there, you having a loathing for friends of his, which you recognise <clears> to be very bad influences in his life. Yes. You know that? Yes. And you should also know and remember how a friend of his had been in prison or had been in a lock up device, something where yes. I'm locked away. Is that yes, you definitely. Say, is that? Yeah. And, um, as he's remembering there, and to be fair, that's at least three, four of his friends that that happened Probably to. Probably more. <laughs> Probably more. Yeah. Um, because I feel that, and I know if I only had my time again, I would have taken more of your advice, you see yes. that, and wouldn't have got involved yes. in that same way. You have three of your own children. He was one of them. 
But you should also understand how the name of Mark is important here to me too. Do you see Mark that? was his brother-in-law. His brother-in-law. Mm. I know it's Im important or relevant there to me. And I'm, and I'm not, don't go on too much. And I, and I know he, he comes back. I've got him back. Now, um, listen, uh, where, where you have a photograph of him out on show, you have a photograph of him. It's in a frame, but he stands in a doorway. So you can still see the outline of the two sides of a doorway. I feel almost like I want to put my hands like that at a doorway and poke my head in a room like That's this. That's exactly what he was doing, yeah. And you have that photograph yes. of him. Now, all of that to one side. If I'm to remain with you, you would understand a baby that passes as, as, a, as, a, as um, a cot death, a baby born, a baby loved, a baby wrapped and washed and, and, and adored, but passes very small. Do you see that for me at all? It was all? about six weeks ago. Okay, but you, and you know that baby? Yes. That's it. And, and you say the baby's only just passed then? Yes. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? Um, but I know as, as your son comes to me here, he holds a, a baby in his arms. It was his niece. His niece. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he just makes me feel, I've got the baby, and he makes me feel this baby that passes. The nearest I can get to that is, is a, as a cot death. Because I know that baby yes. is loved in the, in the world. Yeah, and it passes. Yeah. Uh, but I know he has the, the baby in his arms. And um, it will be wonderful maybe to extend the thought to the other family and friends here that the baby's in the other world. He's one of those who would look after that child mm -hmm. uh, um, um, for, for you. And last night, last night, you lit a candle for your son in a prayer. or lit a candle with your son in mind but I only want to go about one night to go. Do you see that yes. at all? Promise yeah. me that's true. Yes, I do. And last night you lit a candle for him in his memory. Yes. Oh, that's my name. Um, because I know he sees that and he knows this too. And weirdly enough, because I don't think you're Roman Catholic, but I do feel you've been holding rosary beads or you've been holding a cross and a chain with prayer. Yeah, that one cross and a chain, mm -hmm. and I don't, but would you also hold that as you pray, or would you hold that to try to get him to come close to you? It's my daughter's, I hold it, hoping she comes. <laughs> I, I hope you get your message from her soon. Thank you. Um, but in the meantime, God bless your heart. God Thank bless you very you. much indeed for listening to me. My son's name was Carl. Um, he was 25 when he passed over. Quite a bubbly character, loved fishing, loved his children, but he lived 100 miles away from me. But we saw each other as much as we could. I don't want to swear, um, but I know he could be a little sod at times, but I know that you saw always the best in him. Yes. Did you see that from yes. me? Always the goodness in yes. him. He was very much a, a mother's son, really. You know, we had a special bond. I know as I'm talking to him, I feel I keep losing him because he's going up and down on a motorbike here in front of me and I feel quite proficient on that bike, you see that? He had his first motorbike without me even knowing he had one. I only found out when the police actually came and said he'd been riding a bike that I didn't know about. So his passion, he loved motorbikes, he loved cars as well, but he had quite a few motorbikes in his time. You should re recognise and remember here that you disliked his friends or yes. you hated his friends really. Yes. And you should also know and remember how a friend of his had been in prison. I was quite aware that some of them were quite dodgy characters and a few of them been in prison and probably more since, but um, some of them were not very desirable to me anyway. But nevertheless they were his friends and uh, whatever he chose was his choice. He passes quickly to the spirit world when he passes, and I feel that I pass outside or outdoors. Carl committed suicide. Um, it was um, 15 years ago now. It was, um, I had a feeling for quite a while that something wasn't quite right, but he, he always tried to hide it. Um, his marriage had just broken up, and um, he was very depressed, um, although it was still quite a shock that he actually went down that path and uh, he committed suicide and the police came to me and told me what he'd done and it was just horrendous and it's been a long old struggle to even come to terms with it. Where 
he passes over, I know that there were lots of flowers placed in the space where he passes. Carl actually um, committed suicide by jumping off a bridge and um, it was over a motorway and the, the bridge takes from one village to another village really and when I, when I went there to see where he died um, there were flowers everywhere along all the railings, people had put flowers there and so for a few years I, I continued to do that you know, myself. You went three times significantly to a chapel of rest or something like yes. this? Carl was in two lots of Chapel of Rest, one, one where he died and one when I brought him home and um, I visited him all together three times. I know he wants to thank you for the orange flower that you laid against him there and he, and he saw that there from um, the spirit world. Carl wanted to be cremated but I had his ashes interned and I threw an orange rose on top of the um, ashes when he was when he died. You should also understand how the name of Mark is important here to me too. Mark was Carl's brother-in-law and he was the only male on Carl's wife's side of the family. Uh, so they got on quite well. He just makes me feel I've got the baby and he makes me feel this baby that passes. The nearest I can get to that is, is a, as a cot death. A few days before um, I came to see Tony, uh, Mark's daughter had had a baby and uh, who died at two days old and and I, I believe that Carl had come through to let Mark know that everything was all right there. I do feel you've been holding rosary beads or you've been holding a cross and a chain with prayer. Yeah, that one. Well, four years ago my, my, I found my daughter dead and um, I had spoken to a medium since her death who told me that um, my daughter had got this cross, and which I didn't know she had it, and asked the medium to tell me to look for it in her jewellery and wear it, and so I have done since. My daughter um, had a, she was 34 when she died, and she, she had a rare um, syndrome called Cornelia Delange syndrome, but was very capable and looked after herself, and she was just a one-off. Um, the day I found her was the day before I was getting married and she was going to be my bridesmaid. Um, there was no cause of death. Um, I went into her flat and she was dead under a duvet. They just put it down to early death syndrome. I, I hope you get your message from her soon. Thank you. Um, but in the meantime, God bless your heart. God Thank bless you very you. much Thank indeed you. for listening to me. Although he didn't bring my daughter through, uh, it doesn't surprise me very much because she wasn't very keen on men. As soon as she comes through to mediums, she, she comes through to women. And um, so, that didn't surprise me that Tracy hadn't come through, but for Carl to come through and to have told me the things that he did tell me is, uh, is uplifting.